you are not born a woman you become one so this act of becoming a woman is acting out so it's all about playing a role olivia right now is not playing the role she is supposed to play hello and welcome back to nibble pop today we are going to look at the third scene of fourth act of shakespeare's 12th night we have been doing this series over a long time now and we are almost almost at the end of the play this is going to be the last scene of fourth act and at the same time this is going to be the scene where we will see how olivia is approaching her personal resolution If you have already watched the previous videos in this series of Twelfth Night, then chances are that you have already subscribed to our channel. If you haven't done so yet, please do so right now so that you stay updated about anything that we upload after this. And also, don't forget to press that notification bell because that will give you instant notifications. This is going to be a very very short video. So without wasting any more time let's just jump straight into the scene. This is Munami Mukherjee. Welcome once again. Scene 3 begins with Sebastian standing on the stage. Now from the point of view of Sebastian things have been pretty weird. See he came to Elivia thinking that his uh well sister is dead his friend antonio he appears to be quite scared to walk out in public so he is left all alone and then he encounters these people who start hitting him and he has this fight with them and then a lady comes as if to rescue him takes him away and then makes him feel things which he is not sure about he doesn't know how to make sense of whatever is happening so here we see him talking to himself and you already know that when a character is on stage speaking only to himself or herself and only the audience can hear him or her this is called a soliloquy soliloquy it has the uh, word solo and solo means all alone or all by oneself so sebastian here is speaking to himself and when a person speaks in a soliloquy usually we hear them speak what is actually going on in their minds because why should they even lie when there is nobody else around them to hear them this is the air that is the glorious sun so he is trying to convince himself that this is reality this is really happening to him the sun is really there the air is really all around him so definitely this is not a dream and then he looks at probably a ring which olivia has already given him as a token of engagement this pearl she gave me i do feel it and see it so he's looking at his ring maybe he's turning it a bit looking at the pearl on the ring and saying that she gave me this pearl and well i can see this pearl this is very real to me and though this wonder that enwraps me thus so is totally enwrapped in wonder he is covered in amazement he cannot figure out what's happening yet it is not madness he somehow doesn't feel as if he has lost his senses he doesn't think that he has turned mad so he is thinking what is happening because i definitely have not become a lunatic where is antonio then now antonio had promised him that he would be waiting at the elephants that inn and when sebastian went back he didn't find antonio there why because antonio is already arrested sebastian doesn't know that yet okay so he is confused uh, why is antonio not there at the inn when i went back to check on him i could not find him at the elephant elephant is the name of that inn yet 
there he was and there i found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out so he went to this inn and there he found out that antonio was there and he had gone out to look for sebastian so sebastian is thinking that if antonio had come out of that place in search of me why has he not yet found me where did he go then he is worried his counsel now might do me golden service why is he thinking about antonio because in illyria he doesn't have any friends antonio is the only person uh, who he can trust and he really needs some advice right now from his friend as to how to behave with this woman who is looking at him with such adoration so he wants some real experience advice and he is missing antonio for though my soul disputes well with my sense that this may be some error he is constantly questioning this whole situation there must have been some major mistake on the part of this lady of course we know that olivia has made a mistake a happy mistake a relieving mistake for her but a mistake sebastian doesn't know anything about it he is thinking that this woman must have made some mistake some error but no madness yet doth this accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all instance all discourse this whole situation is something beyond imagination beyond anything ever heard of that i am ready to distrust mine eyes i can't even believe what i'm seeing and wrangle with my reason that persuades me so his reason his logic is constantly warning him telling him that something is definitely very wrong here but his heart his soul wants to believe this why because he is feeling very happy about the fact that this beautiful woman with a great fortune has fallen in love with him and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to any other trust but that i am mad or else that lady is mad so he is thinking that okay maybe i am not mad in that case that lady is definitely you know she has lost her senses she has turned mad and then he is saying yet if it were so she could not sway her house command her followers take and give back affairs and their dispatch with such a smooth discreet and stable bearing as i perceive she does so olivia she behaves with a lot of self control discretion proper judgment when she is dealing with her servants when she is giving them orders when she is managing such a big household right and this whole stature of olivia as a as an efficient administrator that shows that she is definitely not mad you know this whole thing is also happening with orsino we will see later how orsino is dealing with antonio we will come to that later but we will find that antonio is spoken to or spoken at by orsino in a way which shows that orsino is very level headed he is very mature okay but when it comes to love well orsino has no judgment at all okay the same thing is happening with olivia when it comes to love or matters of heart she uh, is not very logical but when it comes to managing her household she is extremely efficient and that confuses sebastian and he says that this lady she is very much in control of her life then how can i say she is mad there is something in it that is deceivable something is wrong here something is deceivable i cannot understand why this is happening well and then he stops talking because olivia enters and he says but here the lady comes Olivia comes with a priest. Now this is a real priest. This is not Sir Topas. This is not uh, well the fool in disguise. He's a real priest, a very serious-looking, uh, well maybe a bit aged uh, priest, 
and why has she brought a priest? Blame not this haste of mine. She is in a hurry here. She is rushing things. What things? If you mean well, now go with me and with this holy man into the chantry by. So she wants Sebastian to go with her and the priest to this chapel, to this small church. There, before him, before the priest, the priest is this witness, you know. And underneath that consecrated roof, consecrated means holy, uh, something which is very, very sacred. So under that sacred place or in that sacred house of God, she is asking what? Ply to me the full assurance of your faith, that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. She wants to marry Sebastian. She wants Sebastian to commit to her. She wants Sebastian to accept her as his wife. Okay, that is what you do in churches, don't you? So she is really very serious. But why is she rushing so much? Because she herself says that her soul is doubtful and jealous. She feels that uh, now that she has some control over this man who she thinks is Cesario, she doesn't want to lose the opportunity. She wants to take him, get married to him and somehow confirm this relationship so that he doesn't run away from her. Because earlier Cesario had been very rude to her. So she was a bit afraid that maybe uh, he might change his mind now that this man looks uh, well okay with this relationship. Let's just get married. And then she knows that Sebastian, oh, sorry, in this case she knows it's Cesario. She knows that this man is scared because somehow he doesn't want to tell others that he is married to Olivia. So she says that we will not tell anyone about our wedding unless you want us to. He shall conceal it. So the priest, he will hide the fact. He will not tell others right now. Whilst you are willing, it shall come to note. When you will want, we will tell others and we will not just tell, we will have a grand celebration because I belong to this uh, great family, so we all deserve a good party. What time we will our celebration keep according to my birth, so according to my standard, according to my stature, we will have a grand celebration. What do you say? What would Sebastian say? He's pretty happy about it and he's thinking, why shouldn't I even tell others about my wedding? I can have the party today. Anyway, he is definitely looking forward to this wedding and he says I'll follow this good man and go with you and having sown truth ever will be true the so musically uh, he's speaking now in rhymes and this musicality is the flavor of Twelfth Night and we see that uh, whenever something conclusive happens whenever something happy is happening we have some uh, little bit of rhyme uh, going on about and here you see he is saying you and then true they are rhyming words Sebastian is very happy he wants to get married Olivia is also very happy definitely then lead the way good father and heavens so shine that they may fairly note this act of mine she wants the blessings of heavens and in this case of course while well, like we know that her father is dead her brother is dead and she feels that uh, she needs the blessings of her dead father and brother who are up in heaven. This is a very short scene, nothing to explain much. Only I want you to note uh, the way she is uh, apologizing for her act, for her impatience, the fact that she is rushing things because she feels that she is going against what is expected of a woman. Women are supposed to wait for men to propose to them, to, to you know, kind of uh, fall in front of them on their knees and beg uh, their love. But she is going against the norms here. And well, this is Twelfth Night, you know, it destabilizes uh, what we consider as normal. 
normal sexual behavior, normal gender roles. Olivia is going against what society has taught her to become. So there's a saying, you know, it's a saying by Simone de Beauvoir that you are not born a woman, you become one. So this act of becoming a woman is acting out. So it's all about playing a role. Olivia right now is not playing the role she is supposed to play. So while in case of Viola, we see a physical transformation or something which is visible on surface, in Olivia also we see a transformation. Women in Shakespeare's comedies, they often take up disguises. Uh, we see disguise uh, taken up by Portia in the Merchant of Venice. We see disguise taken up in As You Like It. And even when they don't take up disguises in comedies, they somehow manage to emerge as more powerful characters, more assertive characters than women are usually projected as in other plays by other playwrights. Right. So this is interesting because Olivia is taking charge of a life here and Olivia who would have otherwise been uh, quite miserable uh, because she has no guardian uh, and look at the guardian figure she has at home. You have Toby, the drunk Toby, Malvolio, the horrid Malvolio. These are the male figures who are supposed to keep her protected. Of course, she has to take her life in her own hands. She has to steer her own carriage of life and, well, drive Sebastian along with her. So she is looking towards a very uh, a happy ending to her ordeals. But this is not the ending of the play. We have Act 5 waiting for us. And the next scene is going to be a huge, huge one because Act 5 is a single scene act. All the complications are going to be resolved. This is going to be the last video of this textual reading. So I want you all to watch that last video of the series which we will upload uh, right after this video because everybody loves a happy ending and comedies are all about that. Thank you once again. It has been really nice having you with us. So till our next video, stay happy, stay subscribed. This is Monami Mukherjee signing off.